We open the 214th commencement exercises of Bowdoin College with an invocation offered by the Reverend Eduardo Pazo Palma. I invite you to assume a posture of reflection, prayer, or meditation. Author of life and giver of hope, we have come here today with deep gratitude for our loved ones, those present and those who couldn't be here today. We are grateful for our friends. We're grateful for our given and chosen families who have supported us. We are grateful for their encouragement, their dedication, their wisdom, and their sacrifices made on our behalf. Today, we're also thankful for our peers, our friends, our roommates, who have journeyed with us for the last four years. We share in deep gratitude for our professors and mentors who have gifted us with wisdom and knowledge. And we are thankful for every person at Bowdoin who has contributed to the success and welfare of this graduating class. Class of 2019, as you look into the future, may you go forth without fear without hesitation, without worry, knowing that you have been prepared to confront any challenges that may come your way, knowing that your friends and family and community will continue to walk alongside with you every step of the way. May you go forth with love. May you, found a, may you find a profound and rich love of your career, your vocation, your families, and yourselves. May you go forth with courage in a joyful expectation of the bright futures which await for you outside of this courtyard. May you go forth to solve the world's pro pressing problems and work to create more just, sustainable, and equitable societies. May you be blessed to be awakened to the wonderful and thrilling journey you're about to commence. Class of 2019, may you be blessed to find joy, love, and peace wherever you go next. Amen. The national anthem will be sung by graduating members of the chamber choir, chorus, and student a cappella groups with accompaniment by George Lopez, Beck Beckworth artist in residence. Please be seated.
Good morning, and welcome to the 214th commencement of Bowdoin College. I'm Shelley Sear, a member of the class of 1976, chair of the Bowdoin College Board of Trustees, and parent of a Bowdoin student 2012. This morning, we gather to honor the members of the class of 2019, who soon will be graduates of one of the most distinguished colleges in the country and the oldest college in Maine. In fact, our college is older than the state itself, with an identity and history that is inextricably linked to this beautiful and extraordinary place. Walking this campus for four years, living as a member of the Brunswick community, and among the fine people of the Mid-Coast region are important and memorable parts of the Bowdoin experience. So it is customary at commencement for the college to invite a representative of the state to bring greetings to our seniors. This morning I have the privilege of introducing to you Mohammed Noor, who is graduating today with a double major in Government and Legal Studies and Africana Studies. But there's more, <laughs> and a minor in education. <laughs> Mo, who was raised in nearby Portland, served as president of the Bowdoin Student Government. He was one of the first Bowdoin Public Service Initiative Fellows. And during that fellowship, Mo interned at the Somali Embassy in Washington, DC. Mo received a Truman Scholarship for graduate studies in public service. And he wants to pursue both a master's degree in international relations and a law degree so that he may specialize in international security and conflict resolution. Please join me in welcoming Mo Nur, who will offer greetings from the state of Maine. Friends, family, and cherished guests, good morning on this auspicious day. I have the honor and privilege to welcome you all to our home at Bowdoin College and to our home in the great state of Maine. As some of you may have noticed during your travels here today, there is a large green welcome sign near the Kittery exit on the main turnpike. It reads, welcome home. Now, whether you're from away or have lived here your entire life like I have, Maine has a magical way of feeling like home. In Maine, I'm considered a city boy. I, I was born and raised in Portland, but my mother immigrated here from Somalia during the winter of 1993. She escaped a brutal civil war with the hope that her children could have the opportunity to not only live a better life, but to pursue their wildest dreams. Maine has become home to families like mine who have traversed oceans and continents, faced adversity and hardship in the pursuit of happiness, opportunity, and a place to call home. Growing up in Maine wasn't always easy. The winter starts when it wants to and leaves when it's good and ready. <laughs> and as Mark Twain once said of, of New England, if you don't like the weather now, just wait a few minutes. But navigating Maine as the son of a Somali immigrant was challenging, and I struggled to find my place here. But through those challenges came growth, and with growth came progress. And I'm so proud of how much progress our state has made, and I'm so proud to be a Mainer. Mainers are kind, humble, generous, and will always go out of their way to help others to create this familial feeling of home. When I think of home, I see Maine's stunning stoic coastline. I see our iconic lighthouses perched along sparkling bays. I smell the brisk fall air while looking at the sunset at Mount Katahdin. I feel the warm summer nights in Portland's Old Port. And now, 
Now I see a small liberal arts college nestled on the Atlantic coast. Maine is full of unimaginable wonder. As we leave Bowdoin to blaze new trails, I ask that we remember the home we found and cultivated right here in Maine. Class of 2019, wherever you may go and whatever you may do, know that Maine will always be a home that welcomes you with wide arms and an open heart. I'd like to end with something that Governor Janet Mills, the first female governor of our state, once uh, said about that welcome sign. She said that it is a reminder of the love we all share for this great state as we ensure that Maine is a place of opportunity for all those hoping to create a better future for themselves and their family. To all of them, I say, welcome home. Thank you. I'm not following that. <laughs> so good morning, class of 2019, and welcome to this glorious celebration on this glorious day, one that I think you well earned after a pretty cruddy spring. Um, and it's so glorious, in fact, that I would like to remind folks, given that it's warm for the first time, that we've got water uh, tents uh, out here, and if you feel like you're getting too hot, someone can help take care of you. So take care of yourself, please. I'd like to welcome our honorands, our trustees, our faculty, staff, alumni, our Brunswick neighbors, and especially family and friends who are here to celebrate a joyous occasion. Thank you for traveling from all parts of our country and the world to be here on the campus of the college that we love. And to our graduates, one journey ends today and another begins. This is our 214th commencement. In 1806, when the first commencement took place on these grounds, Thomas Jefferson was in the White House. Congress was in only its ninth session, and it would be three years before Abraham Lincoln was born. And while the design of campus has changed a touch over the years, Massachusetts Hall, just over there, our first building was standing and in operation. Very few institutions are as durable as Bowdoin, a place that embra embraces both change and a steadfast commitment to core values as essential elements in a great liberal arts education. In the offer of the college, our seventh president, William DeWitt Hyde, described these as among the best four years of your life. And for those that have come before you, those that have marched in the previous 213 graduations on these grounds, they were among the best four years of their lives because of the rich, wonderful, challenging, and rewarding experiences on campus and the foundation of knowledge and skills and friendship and sense of self that came from all of that, experiences that will make your life richer every day. And I'd like to ask our students now to stand and turn and face your family and friends. Consider all that they have done to help you, how much they love you and have supported you, and thank them with your applause. And if you could also thank the amazing faculty and amazing staff at Bowdoin for all that they have done to make this experience so remarkable. All right, you don't have to stand again until we actually get to that moment. I'd like to recognize several folks here today. First, as I noted yesterday at baccalaureate, Dean Tim Foster, who has been in student affairs here for 23 years and our dean for the last 13, retires on June 30. And this is his last official Bowdoin commencement. He leaves a legacy that is virtually unmatched at this college, and we owe him great, great thanks. Tim, thank you. He's out there somewhere hiding in the crowd, I know. 
We're also saying something of a goodbye to Dr. Michelle Sear, class of 1976, the outgoing chair of the Board of Trustees. Shelley is a physician on the faculty of Brown's Medical School and has been a Bowdoin trustee for 19 years. Thankfully, she will remain a trustee, but her time as our chair has come to an end. And she has been a great chair, respected and trusted by our board, and a wonderful partner uh, and thoughtful uh, thought partner for me. So, Shelley, thank you. I'd also like to acknowledge the military service of two seniors. Amar Parker has served in the Army Reserve while attending Bowdoin and next year heads off to Officer Candidate School. And yesterday, continuing a long Bowdoin tradition, Jake Stenquist was commissioned as an officer into the United States Marine Corps. Many congratulations and Godspeed to both of you. And finally, while each of you is truly quite special, there is a remarkable member of our community receiving her degree today. This week marks two milestones for Lisa Bouchard, an administrative coordinator in dining services here. Monday was her 23rd anniversary as an employee at Bowdoin. And today is the culmination of an 18-year quest to earn her college degree. During that time, Lisa has uh, worked full-time here seen her own three children graduate from college and four grandchildren come into this world. She took her first class here in 2001 and matriculated officially in 2008 and after 32 classes, mostly one at a time, she will be awarded her bachelor's degree today. Lisa, congratulations. You are an inspiration to all of us, Lisa. So, class of 2019, here we are, four years later. I stood right about here. You sat right about there. It was a beautiful August evening, and we all came together for the very first time. And as I have said to many of you over the last few days, it is almost impossible to get my head around how much you have done and all that you have become since that summer evening. For all of us, the last four years have been amazing. Not every moment has been good or great, for sure, but taken all together and summing it all up, it has been nothing short of remarkable and life-changing for you and for me. Know that you have made the college better and you have made me better as a president and as a person. And for that, I am grateful beyond words. There will never be another first class for me. You are it. And for Julianne and for me, the class of 2019 will always be very special. Yesterday, I spoke with you at baccalaureate about Iris Davis, class of 78, and the challenge ahead for you of building or rebuilding community. And this morning, I'd like to share with you briefly a related idea, the singular insight that I've gleaned in my 60 years about what I think is most important for a happy life has nothing to do with your GPA or your smarts, money, careers, titles, and so forth. It is all about your heart and your soul. Find and nurture the special relationships that make you whole. Find the people who love you completely and without question, and they are out there. Grow the friendships and the relationships that draw out the best in you with those who love you for who you are and who are there for you as you are for them. And they are magical and they are life-changing. No amount of money, no fancy titles, no other goals will come close to the satisfaction that comes from these friendships and relationships. And nothing will sustain you in the same way and nothing else will make your life as good. Class of 2019, we honor all that you have accomplished. Many congratulations and Godspeed. It is my privilege now to introduce our two student speakers. And our first speaker today is Julia O'Rourke, winner of the Class of 1868 prize. Throughout her four years at Bowdoin, Julia ran with the cross country and indoor and outdoor track teams and served as captain of all three teams 
her junior and her senior year. She says she values the team's close-knit cultures, goofy traditions, and the chance to connect with several generations of inspiring women who have run track or cross country here. Julia had a standout year as a senior athlete for the first time competing in the cross country nationals and setting the school record for the 5K. She says that her evolution from being not super competitive at a high level to being a star is a bit of a mystery, but she gives great credit to the collaborative nature of her team and to the support she received from Coach Peter Slavinsky. Julia was a house proctor her junior year, head RA her senior year, and while she didn't study away, she has said that proctoring 27 sophomores at Reed House was an adventure, and I am sure that is true. <laughs> Next year, she will go abroad, having won a prestigious Fulbright Fellowship to teach English in South Korea. Last fall, Julia did an independent study that pulled together her English and her education majors. She wrote four short fiction, fiction pieces, pieces from the perspective of students, a teacher, and a school principal, all of whom were wrestling with the challenges of excessive standardized testing. And Julia asked if I could close my remarks with a shout out to Res Life, preparing her with her first year roommates. She stuck with them and they with her through their four years here together. Please join me in welcoming Julia O'Rourke, who will speak to us about her cherished bicycle, Charlotte. President Rose, members of the college, and guests, I am delighted to be speaking with you on this momentous occasion. I want to first ask you to cast your minds back to late August 2015, a time when President Rose and the class of 2019 were about to begin our first year at Bowdoin College. Perhaps my classmates in the audience were busy packing up bags and saying goodbye to friends. Maybe you were wondering what your roommates would be like. And friends and family members might have been checking to be sure their college-bound student had put together all the supplies needed for their orientation trip. I don't know about all of you, but the evening before move-in day, I found myself in the garage of a Brunswick home, about two miles from where I stand now, where a man named Chris lives with his young family. My dad found Chris while perusing Bowdoin's Student Digest on a hunt for the perfect bike a mission motivated both by my need to distract myself from my college nerves and my dad's need to make me feel better. When I was six, before I could ride a bike, I would feel lonely and frustrated when my older brothers rode away on theirs. Until finally, one day, my dad took me down the road to a grassy area to teach me how to ride. My lack of coordination was extremely apparent as I fell onto the grass over and over again but I kept getting back on the bike because I wanted nothing more than to ride with my brothers around our neighborhood. Biking was freedom to me, far better than sitting in the back of a car without control over where I was headed. And now, so many years later, my dad seemed to know that what I needed was to feel that sense of freedom again, to be reminded that I was independent enough to embark on a new experience, even if the prospect scared me. So on that August evening before move-in day, I arrived at Chris's house with a contradictory mix of emotions. In one sense, I felt antsy to start college independently and get move-in over with. But I also felt sad about the prospect of leaving my family and the comforts of home. These feelings combined to generate the foulest of moods, such that my family probably couldn't wait to ship me off on a canoe trip in northern Maine for four days. Nothing they said about how wonderful college would be would make me feel any better. And the promise of Bowdoin's offer of the college that we will come to be at home in all lands felt out of reach. And then I saw her, Charlotte. I knew her name as soon as I laid my eyes on her. A vintage, pale, yellow cruiser bike. She was perfect. Without the slightest hesitation, I picked her. Chris tuned her up for me, adjusted the seat, and I rode back to town. At the time, I had no idea that the route I took, which was then an unfamiliar and long road, was one I would ultimately run on hundreds of times with cross-country teammates. 
I couldn't have known then, but this path would lead Charlotte and me to beautiful ocean views, polar plunges, and home-cooked dinners with Brunswick's welcoming residents. Now, when I think about how long it will be before I run these streets again, I'm filled with the same bittersweet anticipation that I felt in those days leading up to move in. Charlotte helped me through that first year, taking me all over Bowdoin and Brunswick. She managed to get me from my intro psych class all the way to the field house in time for track practice, and then to Thorne in time for dinner. And whenever I felt over-socialized, I slipped away to the Androscoggin for some downtime. On Fridays in late spring, my friends and I would ride to the ocean for an afternoon swim. So with Charlotte's help, Bowdoin and Brunswick had quickly become home. I also gradually personalized Charlotte as I grew into my place here. I added a basket, a cup holder for my coffee, and even a giraffe-shaped horn that probably belongs on a child's bicycle. <laughs> Although Charlotte took me on these countless adventures, she hit a downfall around the same time that Bowdoin first began to prove challenging for me. There's a phenomenon we all know, a term we've thrown around throughout our college careers, the sophomore slump. Charlotte hit hers as many of us hit ours. While we panicked about internships, declaring our majors, deciding if we should study abroad and more, Charlotte faced crises of her own. Her new basket was eaten by Bowdoin squirrels, her pedal fell off and her brakes failed, and I felt too stressed and too preoccupied to find the time to fix her. What's more is I left Charlotte unlocked, I failed to register her with security, and I let her rust out in the snow. I neglected Charlotte, just as I neglected my own need for connection and exploration. This, in turn, led me to a more isolated and solitary place. You'd think a bike as stunning as Charlotte would get stolen, and yet she remained outside Stowe Hall through cold wind and snow, and not only did no one steal my bike, but Chris actually passed her one day, and he offered to fix her many issues at no cost. It was then that I realized how much support exists in this place, not just for Charlotte, also for me. And with the help of friends, coaches, professors, and advisors, I rediscovered my sense of balance. How lucky are we that this is how Bowdoin and Brunswick operate? In challenging times, people look out for you, offer to help you, and pump up your tires when you're feeling low. This is the beauty of living in a small community like we do. I think it is this quality of living within a bikeable distance of all the people and things we need that makes it so hard to leave Brunswick and Bowdoin. Next year, the people we've lived with for four years will spread out all across the globe. For example, my roommates will all be in different countries. Some of you will be in big cities, others in rural areas. Some of you will stay in Maine, and some of you will return to your hometowns. But never again will we all live within a bikeable distance of one another. Sometimes when I think about this, it terrifies me, more so than move-in day did back on that August night. What will I do in South Korea without Charlotte, without people to notice when my brakes are wearing and my wheels are falling off? How will we feel without card swipers warmly welcoming us into Thorn each meal, or long impromptu chats with our housekeepers in the hallways of our dorms? What will we do when we can't run into Smith Union or the first floor of HL to instantly find a friend we want to talk to? We all have people, things, and places that helped us navigate Bowdoin for me, one of those was Charlotte. Maybe for you, it was your favorite professor, or the coffee mug you filled up at the cafe before your 8.30 class, or a club or college house in which you found community. Just like on move-in day, many of us are excited about our next steps, but conflicted about having to part with these pieces of our bone and home. I worry that as we feel all the emotions that come with saying goodbye, we might dwell too much on the loss of it all. So I urge us all to go a step further and take a moment to consider what these things, people, and places taught us 
and then let's bring those lessons when we can't bring the rest. Bringing Charlotte to South Korea would be too costly of a baggage fee, so instead I will bring my newfound spirit of adventure and continue to access my networks of support. We can't always bring our friends and roommates, but we can nurture these relationships and support one another as we settle into new places. And in these new homes, we can all bring the level of warmth and kindness that the Bowdoin and Brunswick communities have showed us throughout our time here. So just like riding a bike in an unfamiliar place, we don't quite know what's around the corner for us. My guess is that the spirit we've developed, the lessons we've learned, and the family Bowdoin has given us will help us to feel at home in each of the lands we're about to head off to. And then maybe we won't feel far more than a bikeable distance apart after all. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2019. Fantastic, Julia, thank you. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Anu Uluwapa Asha'ulu, our second commencement speaker. Anu is the winner of the Goodwin Commencement Prize. Born and raised in Nigeria, she moved to St. Paul, Minnesota seven years ago. And in her speech today, she'll discuss her experience as a winter-hating, city-loving, Yoruba girl who found her, somewhat to her and her family's mystification, at our small college in Maine. And we are so glad that she did find her way to Bowdoin. She has made our community so much better in so many ways over the last four years. Anu has served on the board of the Africa Alliance and the African American Society, and in these roles, organized a number of events on campus, including the African Arts Festival and Moral Lounge, and a photo exhibition called Beauty and Color, which included 40 portraits of Bowdoin women of color. She said that she thought this work, particularly her work with the Africa Alliance, it, it is through this work that she has been able to share herself with Bowdoin. A neuroscience major, a theater minor, she completed an independent study with Professor Hadley Horch on the behavioral basis of negative phonotaxy in adult crickets. And she plans to attend medical school after traveling the world on a Watson Fellowship, one of the most prestigious fellowships you can receive. At Bowdoin, Anu has worked as a quantitative reasoning tutor, sexuality, women, and gender study center student director, student activities event manager, and a volunteer tutor at middle school. She's also written regularly for the Orient. She says that the best part of Bowdoin has been making friends who quickly become family. Please join me in welcoming Anu Asha'olu. President Rose, members of the college, and guests. Four years ago, I arrived in Portland Jetport, ecstatic to begin my first semester in college. I was accompanied by my older sister, who had never been to Maine. So as we sifted through baggage claim, she examined the lofts of paintings that decorated the airport with a look of confusion. Then she suddenly burst out asking, Anu, why are you here? I stuttered because I did not know how a winter-hating, city-loving Yoruba girl like myself ended up in Brunswick. However, I was certain that I wanted a challenge. When we arrived at my dorm, I felt anxious. I compared myself to every student because their lives looked so elegant and luxurious. I felt like an outsider trying to forge her way in. And in order to cope, I concealed my identity. I tried to erase the fact that my mother could only send my sister to move me into college, or the fact that our first meal in Maine was stale grocery store pizza that we ate in our bed bug infested motel. So whenever I introduced myself to someone, I saw an opportunity to reinvent myself, saying, hi, my name is Anu, like a new person. 
I needed to prove to myself that I belonged here just like my peers. As time passed, I became more comfortable and on occasion my Nigerian accent would slip out. Soon after, I found myself watching YouTube videos on how to pronounce words the American way. This feeling of self-doubt permeated every aspect of my experience. In class, I silenced myself. I dreaded the days when my professor would try to pronounce my 10-letter name. I felt too visible for comfort. To me, my hypervisibility reinforced the thoughts that Bowdoin was not the place for me. So at the end of the year, I left school with new knowledge and a luggage full of experiences to reflect on. However, returning home was a rude awakening that my past could not be erased. So I settled back into my family's financial situation, working and helping whatever way I could. On my last day of summer, my mother sat me down and gave me a pep talk. And she said, which translates to, do not forget where we came from. My mother's pride in our history was something I lacked. Since I was young, she was confident that my siblings and I would move to America to build a new life. She reminded me of that we only left Nigeria be three years before I started college. She encouraged me to learn for a turbulent life in Nigeria and hope for a better future, for a new life, a life with safety, education, and abundant opportunities, a life we deserved. So shortly after returning for my sophomore year, I was determined to experience Bowdoin more freely and authentically myself. This included holding my head up high and feeling proudly African. I was, <laughs> I was less worried about my accent slipping out or my professor saying my name in class. I walked around campus claiming each space with each step. Though I found my new successes, I needed to learn how to fail. Failure can be a difficult yet transformative experience only if you allow it to be. Ironically, it is very easy to fail. <laughs> In my case, I just had to take ample neuroscience courses. <laughs> when I received the grades for my first neurobiology exam, I was shocked. I got a 55%. <laughs> I frantically reached out to my professor, Hadley Hort, to review my exam over dinner that evening. In one hand, I held my test, and in the other, a fork full of stir fry. Right as she was about to take of her sip of her water, I started weeping. I kept mumbling, I have failed. What am I going to tell my mother? I wish I knew the power of failure then. Luckily, I was surrounded by peers who supported me and mentors who counseled me. Soon I learned that failure was a fine opportunity to keep trying. After that experience, Professor Horch and I worked closely to boost my performance. My story is not uncommon. All of us have had at least one moment of failure, whether it was spending all night in Smith Union trying to finish a paper, or having mornings ruined by a devastating exam grade. Not to mention the many tears that flowed in Hawthorne Longfellow Library struggling to finish a problem set. The struggle was real, yet we triumphed. We learned valuable life lessons that no textbook could begin to explain. Although the vital part the classroom is a vital part of our education. We also champion learning outside of the lecture halls. I like to joke that Bowdoin is the, in the Bowdoin, the classroom is the extracurricular. Every student here has dabbled in at least one activity. We have embraced opportunities to socially and intellectually broaden our minds. We have engaged in conversations with peers and notable figures around the world. We have listened to memorable speakers like Noam Chomsky, Roxanne Gay, Senator Susan Collins, April Ryan, and my personal favorite, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. <laughs> At some point, we have taken a leap of faith to learn about marginalized histories. We have organized rallies, volunteered in local understaffed communities, and hosted discussions that challenge our perspectives of the world around us. We have learned that we can only make changes if we are resilient. And for some of us, our mere presence is resilient. 
our breath, walk, and exist and disrupts the homogeneity of institutions like this one. We have grown to love our college while reconciling the shortcomings of its history. Understandably, this journey has not always been rosy. There were days when we felt like imposters in our own school because our skin was too black to blend into the walls around us. Our voices were too loud to remain silenced. We stood out like comets on a dark, starry night. With each day on this campus, our presence challenged stereotypes and assumptions. But like the great Maya Angelou said, still I rise. We rose above ignorance, fear, and preconceptions of what we are meant to be, and we embraced the offer of the college to be home in all lands. We defied all odds and worked tirelessly to make Bowdoin a semblance of our own home. Like meteorites, we sparked change. From experiencing vice incidents our first year to hiring the senior vice president of diversity and inclusion, we have grown. And as we struggled and proven ourselves to be resilient, we call Bowdoin to acknowledge its shortcomings and potential for continued change. Bowdoin too must face its failures and be as resilient as its students are. Bowdoin must let a craving for justice guide a lifelong commitment for equity. Together, we can revolutionize the narratives of minorities on campus. Today, I am amazed by the passion, dedication, and drive in this institution. It is remarkable to see students so willing to make an imprint at Bowdoin and in the world. I matriculated at 16 years old with little concept of what my purpose was or who I wanted to be. But I was certain that Bowdoin will help me find answers. As I continue on to the next stage of my life, pursuing a year of travel, I will cherish the experiences that have challenged me to be a better version of myself, to work towards the common good and to value individual connection. Bowdoin was the first place that taught me the power of unity and restored my faith in society. I am grateful for opportunities to grow and learn from my peers. And as we prepare to face new challenges, I urge you to reflect on this quote from my late father. Ayeole, everything will be all right. As long as you use your brain and keep trying, everything will be okay. That was beautiful, Anu. Thank you. I'm going to take the grace of your words on failure and acknowledge a failure of mine a few moments ago. Lisa, I messed up your last name, and I apologize. This is a day when we should get names right. You've worked so hard, and uh, I wanted to apologize. So thank you for that. And we will now move to the honorary degrees. Mr. President, the President and the Board of Trustees have voted four honorary degrees to be awarded in accordance with the authority vested in you by the board. As chair of the Board of Trustees, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Earl Lewis. Earl Lewis, professor of history and Afro-American and African studies, founding director, Center for Social Solutions, University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, president emeritus, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and son of the Tidewater. We honor you today for your profound impact in advancing the causes of the arts, humanities, and higher education. 
Born in segregated Virginia and consigned to the Commonwealth's separate and unequal educational institutions until the 10th grade, the encouragement of your family and community supported the growth of your intellect even as you lent your body to the cause of school desegregation. As you transitioned to higher education to hone your mind, you remained steadfast in your belief of history as a civic duty. Through your many distinguished publications, you've cemented your role as an eminent scholar of black history as American history. When the South called, you responded. As provost at Emory University, you were the highest ranking black administration ever at that institution. Yet ever mindful pathbreaker, you reminded us that you were only able to be the first because those before you had passed the dream forward. As sixth president of the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, you reaffirmed the value of the liberal arts and were resolute in your belief that diversity is an asset at the heart of a healthy democracy and thus in our compelling interests. You insisted that the foundation fund initiatives while also forging partnerships. Now, as director of the Center for Social Solutions, you cross disciplinary lines and connect academia to the private sector in order to solve the world's most intractable problems, including bringing an end to the urge of slavery and the future of work and dignity in the age of artificial intelligence. You are a visionary who has demonstrated that if we truly care about the common good, we must keep our eyes trained on the future, even as we interrogate the past. President Rose, on behalf of the college, I am honored to present Earl Lewis for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Earl Lewis, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I confer the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. As Chair of the Board of Trustees, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Science, Nadja A. Rosenthal. Dr. Nadia Rosenthal, Professor and Scientific Director of the Jackson Laboratory in Bar Harbor, Maine. You are a world-renowned researcher who has unlocked mysteries about the molecular basis of health and disease. You began with cracking the genetic code for insulin and then became a global leader in the use of mouse models to investigate development, disease, and tissue repair. We honor you today for your role as a visionary leader who has enhanced the common good by establishing research facilities across the globe to enable these types of studies. In high school, your passion for art led you to become fascinated by the extraordinary patterns that exist in nature. You were driven to understand why things are the shape they are and how form emerges. Driven to study these questions, you pursued your undergraduate education at University of North Wales in the United Kingdom and Harvard University. Your doctoral work at Harvard Medical School brought you to the forefront of molecular biology. There you learned foundational techniques that formed the basis of your biochemistry PhD and set the stage for your deployment of these techniques in developmental and disease biology. As a faculty member, you contributed to our genetic understanding of muscle and heart development, and you defined our understanding of how stem cells can be used for tissue regeneration. You pursued this groundbreaking research while maintaining a commitment to training future generations of researchers. In addition to your research efforts, 
You are a leader who established cutting edge mouse biology programs on three different continents. Now, as the scientific director of the Jackson Laboratory, you continue to make great strides as you explore the ability of genetically diverse mice, like some humans, to regenerate heart tissue following a heart attack. In the course of pursuing this work, you helped reveal the genetic underpinnings of why things are the shape they are, how form emerges, how we respond to disease, and perhaps most importantly, how you and now others can meaningfully tackle these questions. While doing so, you have modeled what passion, dedication, and willingness to take risks can afford. President Rose, on behalf of the college, I am honored to present Dr. Nadia Rosenthal for the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Nadia Rosenthal, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Thank you. As Chair of the Board of Trustees, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Sir Paul M. Ruddock. Sir Paul M. Ruddock, we honor you today for your remarkable accomplishments, for your exceptional support of cultural institutions, and for your dedication to the fostering and preservation of human creativity in all its forms. We humbly add our college's name to the illustrious list of those who have previously recognized your achievements. Most notably, you were knighted by Queen Elizabeth in 2011 for your philanthropic support of the arts, and you were made chevalier by the French government in their Order of Arts and Letters in 2015. At an early age, you discovered that the visual and performing arts are capable of sparking curiosity, cultivating ingenuity, and enriching life. You first encountered examples of ancient and medieval art as a young child on visits with your parents to London's Victoria and Albert Museum, launching a lifelong fascination with the visual records of past civilizations. A few years later, when a scholarship allowed you to attend an independent school in Birmingham, you experienced the transformational benefits of an education that included instruction in theater, music, and the arts. You went on to achieve distinction at Mansfield College of the University of Oxford, and from there to a career in the financial world, eventually founding your own investment management firm, Lansdowne Partners, in 1998. But you never strayed far from the artworks that had so captivated you in your youth, and you developed a passion for collecting. By the time of your retirement in 2013, you had amassed one of the most remarkable art collections in the world. However, you were not interested in gathering these treasures solely for your own pleasure. As you yourself have eloquently noted, the objects in your care are the cultural heritage of humankind. You have dedicated yourself to sharing them and to bolstering the venues in which they are studied and made public. Returning to the institution that first entranced you as a child, you became a trustee of the Victoria and Albert Museum in 2002 eventually serving as chair of their board until 2015. Under your leadership, the museum experienced a renaissance of its own, opening new galleries and generating countless contributions to scholarship. You have also been called to serve on the boards of the British Museum, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, and as an international advisor to the Walters Art Museum in Baltimore. Bowdoin, too, has benefited greatly from your willingness to share in your advice and knowledge. You have also supported scholarly organizations that deepen our knowledge of the objects that so inspired you, the Society of Antiquaries in London, the Samuel Courtauld Trust, and the Burlington Magazine Foundation. You have even served as a curator. An exhibition of medieval art that you organized is closing this very weekend in Glasgow. Farther afield, you have engaged deeply with the support of important institutions in Africa, including having been one of the founders of the Ethiopian Heritage Fund, which supports the restoration of ancient art in Ethiopia. 
And in 2008, along with your esteemed wife and partner, Lady Jill Shaw, you returned to the secondary school that had ignited your love of the arts, leading the building of the school's Center for Music, Theater, and Dance. Describing all of these efforts with your usual modesty, you have said simply, I just wanted to say thank you. President Rose, on behalf of the college, I am honored to present Sir Paul M. Ruddick, Patron of Arts, Culture, and Scholarship for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. Thank you, thank you. Paul M. Ruddick, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. Congratulations. As chair of the Board of Trustees, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Sheldon M. Stone. Sheldon M. Stone, Bowdoin Class of 1974, you are a force for the common good, empowering students by offering opportunity. You are a first-generation college student and a financial aid recipient who has in turn quietly provided support that was indispensable in establishing our need-blind, no-loan policies and provided aid to hundreds of students here at Bowdoin College. As President John F. Kennedy stated about appreciation, quote, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them, end quote. You exemplify this ideal. And your generosity has better enabled the college to do the same in living our principles of fairness and opportunity. After graduating from Bowdoin with a degree in government and legal studies, you went to Columbia University for an MBA before becoming an analyst at the Prudential Insurance Company. In 1983, just nine years after leaving Bowdoin, you were named Vice President of Citibank Investment Management, and in 1995, you co-founded Oak Tree Capital Group. You prefer philanthropy without the fanfare, although I am totally blowing your cover right now on that and publicly celebrating your altruism. You are Chair Emeritus of the California Community Foundation, Trustee of the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation, Trustee of the Los Angeles County Museum of Natural History Foundation, on the National Advisory Board of the Johns Hopkins Center for Talented Youth, and on the Advisory Board of the USC Marshall School Center for Investment Studies. You have served Bowdoin as an indispensable member of the Board of Trustees, as well as Chair of the Investment Committee. You established the Stone Family Scholarship Fund in memory of your grandmother Molly, and the Robert I. DeSherbinen Scholarship Fund in memory of the person who encouraged you to attend Bowdoin. Together, you and your wife Cynthia established the Stone Family Fund for the Common Good in support of programs at the McKean Center for the Common Good because you value and cherish the ideals of Bowdoin College. President Rose, on behalf of the college, I am honored to present Sheldon M. Stone for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Sheldon M. Stone, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Thank you. Congratulations. Earl, Nadia, Paul, and Sheldon, thank you for sharing so much of yourselves with Bowdoin College. Congratulations again. All right, the moment's arrived. You ready? Candidati, progradu baccalaureale asurgite. Femina honoranda. Usque uvenes cosensio idoneos primum ad gradum in artibus, nuptibia ferro, utete instructus, eos ad grandum istum admitum placet ne? Placet. Pro actoritate mihi comissa, admito vos ad primum gratum in artibus, 
et dono et concedo omnia jura, privilegia, honoris atque dignitates, ad gradum istum pertinentia. In cuius testimonium asque membranas literis scriptas acipite. Zoe Samantha Ahrens. Robert Eugene Adams. <laughs> Samuel Arthur Adler. John Take Young An. Tim Y. An, <laughs> Lee Sanford Ainsley IV, Hideyoshi Akai, <laughs> Edward Chakwudi Akubade, <laughs> Sophie Charlotte Almutwali. Zaman Adam Aladina. Ryan Ali Shaw. Eve Worrell Allen. Nina Sarah Alvarado Silverman. Natasha Moro Alvarez. Julia Elizabeth Amstutz. Genevieve Catherine Anderley. David Joseph Anderson. Nicole Taylor Anthony. Jacob Aoki. Jack Moore Arnholtz. Anastasia Rose Arvin de Blasio. Anna Oluwapo Adebunmi Ashaulu. Maurice Asari. Isabel Austin Green. Nathan Hall, Austria. Sina Bakhtiari. Daniel Eliason Banks. Sean Baird. Mark E. Bihar. Connor James Belfield. Evelyn Rose Victoria Bellavo. Miranda Ray Bell. Natasha Ann Belsky. Sydney Isabella Benjamin. Elizabeth Roberts Benowitz. David William Berlin. Kylie Brown Best. Ethan Franklin Bevington. Anjali Jane Bala. Matthew Hudson Bialoski. Lucian Salavara Black. Anna Derby Blaustein. 
Andrew Christopher Blunt. Martha Zimmerman Bobin. Callie Bolster. Charlotte Lucy Borden. Jack William Bors. Lisa Marie Buffard. Phoebe Hills Bradbury. <laughs> Carolyn Elizabeth Brady in absentia. <laughs> Eleanor Sarah Brakewood. Yeah. Miles Tremaine Browdigam. <laughs> Henry Francis Dundek Bradar. <laughs> Casey Breslow. Brian Daniel Bristol. Emily Shule Brown. Paige Joanne Brown. Frank Michael Bruni. William Christopher Bucci. Timothy J. Bulens. Felicia Benita Bullock. Zakir Bulmer. Satya Peter Butler. Quinn Byrne. Max Khalil Byron. Jason Christopher Cahoon. Miles Ellis Caldwell. Catherine M. Call. James Patrick Callahan. Mohammed Saidu Kamara. Merid Alice Jane Campbell. Simon Aaron Can. Duncan Tyson Breed Cannon. Robert John Caputo. Samuel McRae Carlin. Luke Everett Carstens. Caroline Grace Carter. Sarah Ann Cartwright. Octavio Castro. Catherine Ann Cavanaugh. Valerie Chang in absentia. Seth Henry Chatterton. Estefania Chavez Flores in absentia. Kevin Chen. Kevin Fakai Chen. Zihao Chen. Taylor Ray Choate. Tyler Jared Connellis. Simon Wingsai Chow. Theodore Adams Christian. Hugh Cockins Chipperoni. Sandro Cochito. 
Nathan John Colonino. Timothy Jacob Collins. Jonna Ann Cook. Seth Cooper. Sean Thomas Cork. Margaret Crossland Coster. Matthew Durin Cody. Salome da Silva Duarte Lopez. John Anthony Dana. Elizabeth Marie D'Angelo. Claire McClellan Dardinsky. Finn Davis Batt. Christopher de Los Angeles Avina. Kaiolu Moi Purotu de Fries. Samuel Gordon Danius. Adam DePaz. James Christopher DeSisto. Donald Kevin Detchu. Miranda Jennifer Dills. Nan Ding. Sterling Aaron Dixon. Sydney Thompson Durgi. Savering Dolker. Jelani Driscoll. Noah Joseph Dubé. Harrison Robert Dunn Polite. Megan Lynn Dustin. Alexander Joseph Ederer. Ivy Stella Elgarten. Tessa Dina Miller Epstein. Rowan Walzer Etzel. Camille Ferradas. Alec Talbot Ferguson Hall. Marissa Abelli Fichter. Gina Ashley Ficarra. Nell Fitzgerald. Sixteen Marie Therese Fleury. Molly Madeline Foley. Sebastian Richard Foster. Gabrielle Allegra Foti. Luke Thomas Frankel. Blanche Lorraine Freilich. Elise Fromson Ho. Callan Roy Fullerton. John Barkley Fullerton. Hayat Mafuz Fully. Sarah Catherine Gaboro. Duncan Peter Gans. Heather Harriet Gans. Paul King Garlic II. Javiera Garao. Julian Rob Garrison. Madeline M. Genibru. Alexander Lynn Gentle. Sebastian Gilligan Kim. Caroline Joy Godfrey. Claire Noel Gaffinet. Jem Torre Gokchum. 
Charles Henry Gordon. Kelsey Simone Alexandria Gordon. Hannah Jane Graham. Alexa Gray. Isaac Greenewalt. Anne Fraser Gregory. Dakota Rowe Griffin. Tess McCaslin Hall. Catherine Kennedy Hansen. Waverly Ann Albright Hardin. Jonathan Michael Harrison. Kanaya Moana Hassan. Peter Stanley Hastings. Gareth Helm. Edward Hugo Sloan Hentoff. Brittany Hernandez. Giselle Hernandez. Charlotte Ann Hevley. Eleanor Joan Haywood. Allegra Elizabeth Hill. Dustin Lee Hines. Carlos Manuel Holguin. Lex P. Horwitz. Benjamin Aaron Hoxie. Shu Shu Shah. Max Stone Huckabee. Darlene Ineza. Catherine Isabel Ippolito. Bolar Erdin Jagdag Dorge. Aziza Sana John Mohammed. Jackie M. Jakes. Aliyah Begum Jessa. Yangang Jerry Zhang in absentia. Ijaz Ahmed Jew. Autumn Lynn Johnson. Kathleen Helen Johnson. Colby Ty Jonkis. Jeff Mickel Joseph. Ara Kang. Michael Charles Can. Matthew Curtis Kaplan in absentia. Hannah Grace Carlin. Lenore Gwyn Kelly. Abigail Catherine Kelly. Trevor Amac Kenkel. Molly Margaret Kennedy. Samuel Robert Kenny. Sacha McEwen Kent. Michaela Starbird Kiefer. Madeline Shane King. Sarah Beth Kinney. Emlyn Knox. Yuta Kobayashi. Elizabeth Ann Colley. Vivian Christine Costin. Ardit Kukai. Irene Kyung. Alexandria Gabrielle Lachance. Ellis Rhodes Lafer. Emma Cates Landis. Kevin Patrick Harris Lane. 
Sophia Marie Latanzio. Simone Noel Laverdier. Susanna Claire Lawhorn. Huyen Gui Lee. Michael Daniel Lee. James Herman Lemkemeyer. Lemkemeyer. Sophie Grace Lemkin. Anna Luisa Roosevelt Lennon. Gerlin Liu Fung. Stephen Leventhal. Samuel Jeremy Lewis. Christopher Holam Lee. Eric Lederbach. Alicia Rosanna Lima. Louisa Cleveland Lingren in absentia. Drew Myers Little. James Isaac Little. Catherine Leo. Sadie Ann Logerfo Olson. Jasmine Miao Long. Brandon Zachary Lopez. Connor Gentry Lovett. Kirani Rache Loving. Sophia H. Lobrano. Thomas Carrier Lucy. Sean Andrew McDonald. Evelyn Sutton McKenzie. Scott Kane McKenzie. Monserrat Viridiana Madrigal. Valeria Magayan. Matthew Christopher McGuire. Swapnika Malapetti. Arthur John Monsalillo. Andrew Marin. Katea Marte. Charles Joseph Masterson. Isaias Angel Dia Maya Diaz Jr. <clears throat> Ripley J. Mayfield. Isabella Kara McCann. <clears throat> Matthew McCall. <clears throat> Kathleen Anita McDonough. Andrew William McGowan. Aiden Cole McRory. Calder Easton McHugh. Lauren Kelly McLaughlin. Connor Barton McManamy. Sean Anthony McParlin. Luis Daniel Mendez. Adonis Israel Meza. Miranda Oser Miller. Surya Mary Milner. Danielle Miro Chinaya. Melissa Kainani Miura. Ryan Patrick Monahan.
Gideon Slocum Moore. Timothy Patrick Moran. Brandon Scott Morandi. Levi R. Morant. Julia Hazlett Morris. David Seth Morrison. Kyle Michael Morrison. Erin Janice Morrissey. Catherine Field Morris Gagne. Phoebe Wentworth Morse. Naptali Moulton. Dante Musapur. Jack Dennis Moynihan. Stephanie Michelle Mueller. Javier Osvaldo Nehera Magdaleno. Thomas Namara. Paul Bruno Nardone. Charlotte Helen Nash. Francisco Nestor Navarro. Eleonora Olivia Niefeld. Neifeld. Casey Jean Nelson. Noah Robert Nelson. Emma Catherine Newbery. Amanda Esty Newman. Peter Neustein. Mukdor Amadou Nyang. Rachel Elizabeth Noon. Mohammed Mukhtar Noor. Jeffrey David Okamoto. Judy Denise Olivares. Toby Omola. Hugh Lillis O'Neill. Amber Morgan Orozco. Julia Jean O'Rourke. Sarah Schaefer Ori. Benjamin Carl Osterholtz. Benjamin Wood Painter. Oceana Jessup Pack. Kamal Palmer. Juan Carlos Pardo. William Sehun Park. Amir Hassan Parker. Anne Elizabeth Parrish. Megan Irene Von Parsons. Stephen J. Pastoriza. Julia Ross Patterson. Emily Susan Pollock. David Larson Peck. Dana Haywood Hurst. Troy Callahan Peters. Andrew Carl Phillips. Claire Mullen Phillips. Ramey Angelina Peters. Philip James Pickus. Gardenia Pimentel. 
Jessica Elaine Piper. Kyle Marius Polson. Harrison Grandfort Porter. Bradley Joseph Potter. Jeffrey Michael Powers. Mira Priyanka Prasad. Cassidy Pratt. Molly Ann Prouty. Hannah Eve Pucker. Anarillis Ramirez. Benjamin Alexander Ratner. UJ Thomas Henry Reeves. Marlena Audrey Reedy. Nicholas Alexander Revers. Jacqueline Marie Rica. Austin Ernesto Ricci. Caroline Michelle Rice. Ezra Burchard Rice. Theo Richards. Frederick John Richardson. Zell Farah Richardson. Aiden Russell Rinsler. Nolan Diaz Roach. Amber Nicole Rock. Connor Clough Rocket. Madeline Abigail Rolf. Cameron J. Rondo. Griffin Ross. Rosa Antonia Rossi Goldthorpe. Amalia Roth. Noah Sayer Rotherman. Rothman, excuse me. Jake Douglas Rourke. Samantha Fay Roy. Aaron William Rubin. Emily Filler Ruby. Natalie Lucia Rudin. Simone Noel Rumpf. Carolyn Marie Rutan. Mitchell Thomas Ryan. Serena Joy Tykert Sabin. Sophie Ann Sadovnikov. Sydney Ann Soleil. Raquel Abigail Santizo. Carl Kennan Serrier. Samantha Paige Schaefer. Mackenzie Jane Schaefer. Elizabeth Hamilton Schilling. Isaac Renan Shukit. Elizabeth Rose Schwartz. Jenna Lynn Scott. Derek Martin Saderman. Sarah Ann Shadowins. Zoe Elena Seamus. David Justin Shank. Natalie Lucian Shea. Megan Lynn Sheehan. Lisa Danielle Sheldon. Ji Eun Shin. Alexia Mira. John Quinn Simons. Jana Singh. Gabriel Afif Suwari Katan. Margaret Muriel Small. Sydney Catherine Smith. 
Bridget Leanne Snow. Sierra Elizabeth Sohikian. Jessa Maria Solis. Brooke Elise Solomon. Ian Daniel Squires. Carrie Jean St. Dennis. Ryan David St. Pierre. Marina Blair Stam. Clayton K. Chazen Maslin Starr. Joseph Edward Stout. Jacob Stein. David Wallace Steiner. Jake Champagne Stenquist. Rebecca Allison Stern. Cordelia Elizabeth Stewart. EJ Sun in Abstentia. Ezra Halil Sunshine. W. Benjamin Susky IV. Samuel Barker Swindell. Anna Matilde Tanga. Caitlin Marie Tardio. McKenna Lynn Thomas Franz. Brian Joseph Thompson. Andrew Cole Tihi. Paloma Tisere. John Luke Titman. Sydney V. Toe. Cody Ross Tedesco. Andreas Jacob Tonkins. Emma Margaret Torres. Catherine Rebecca Torrey. Charles Spencer Towell. Tan Dam Jung Tan. Megan Kiku Trick. Kevin Tian Trin. Sophia Trogu. Alexander Meyer Truitt. Isabel Rolland Udell. Emma Francis Julian. Emmett Francis Julian, excuse me. Grant Ryan Erkin in absentia. Brian Boroto Vadat. Samantha N. Valdivia. Leotis Andre Van Buren, Jr. Adrian Johanna Vandereb. Becca Vanneman. Varun Vamilapoli. Amelia Lorna Vergara. Daniel Walter Valu. Juliana Villa Arias. Christopher Wallace. Michael Dominic Walsh. Andrew Walter McNeil. Evan Alden Walters. John Robinson Ward. Sophie Louise Washington. Yuri Watanabe. Alexander Simon Weinberger. Jonathan Richard Wirtz. Isaiah Smeltzer West. Albert William Vetter. Grace Lamont Wheeler. Jack Henry Whiting. 
John Randall Wilhoit, Allison Page Williams, Daniel Aaron Williams, Ethan Blodgett Winter, Kai Wise, Phineas Wish, Avery Carolina Rodriguez Wolf, Victoria Wu, Xiao Shi Wu, Angela Rose Wanderlich, Eric Werman, Monica Zing, Derek Jonathan Yao. Sinai Solomon Yibra, Taylor Lene Yoder, Jay Min Yu, Benjamin Paul York, Natalie Marie Youssef, Sin Chun Kevin Yu. Victoria Estelle Yu. Rayleigh Graham Zantop Zimlinghaus. Carol Tinyue Jung. Bill Joe. Phoebe Bourget Zipper. Dean Spencer Zucconi. Sally Rose Zuckert. I invite everyone here to congratulate the newest graduates of Bowdoin College. Sally Rose, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'd now like to invite Henry Brudar, the senior class president, up to offer a few words. Henry? Thank you, President Rose, honored guests, friends of the college. Thank you to the class of 2019. It is, it is my distinct privilege to dedicate this year's senior class gift. The class of 2019 has chosen to bestow a scholarship to a deserving member of the incoming class of 2023. Each of us has valued the opportunity to engage with the bright minds from manifold backgrounds, stories, and walks of life that embody the promises of the offer of the college. Bowdoin's steadfast commitment to improving this place's accessibility inspires our gift. With participation from over 66% of our class, the generous many are excited to share the immeasurable opportunity that this school offers. An opportunity that's filled with joy, frustration, kind people, learning, challenges, hope, late nights in HL, early mornings in class, and maybe a dose of intellectual fearlessness. We are giving to this future polar bear an opportunity that includes many lessons, those that come from in and outside of the classroom. Today, after we've all walked the same stage and we now hold the same diploma, perhaps the lessons from out of the classroom become more pertinent. These lessons are plenty, small lessons in kindness, grand lessons in community and place. I would argue, though, that Bowdoin's most valuable lesson is the lesson of balance. Bowdoin is a place defined by balance. As students, we balance our schoolwork and our job applications, our friends and our clubs, our performances and our practices, our ecstatic highs and our painful lows. Throughout our journey, we have sought a happy balance, one that challenges us and one that rewards us. While we have not always succeeded in finding balance, 
maybe in finals, in rejection letters, in dark days, or in trees that refuse to bud, but we've always sought it. The mosaic of the Bowdoin experience is unique to each of us, but there are shared tiles in each that represent the memories and moments that compose our brief and fleeting four years here, and I believe that one of them is balance. While we have crafted our own mosaics, one person among us has included a few extra balance tiles in hers. She did so in a way unlike her, her 471 fellow classmates. I am honored and humbled to dedicate the Class of 2019 Scholarship Fund to Lisa Yankira Buffard. <laughs> 18 years ago, Lisa sat down in her first class at Bowdoin, Introduction to Poetry. Last week, she wrapped up her 32nd course at the college, the Religion Department's Christianity. So what did Lisa balance? Well, it's hard to fit it all in. Working full time in Bowdoin's dining services, Lisa squeezed one course a semester under her belt, all the while shepherding off her own children to and through college. Today, Lisa graduates alongside her classmates with a double major in religion and gender and women's studies. Without a doubt, Lisa has included balance in her mosaic, with no shortage of tiles in humility, positivity, and humor. It is difficult to imagine someone who embodies the ideals of Bowdoin's lessons better than Lisa does. As we finally add our Bowdoin tile to our life's mosaic, remember the importance that Bowdoin's lessons played in its crafting. At Bowdoin, we've all strived to find the perfect balance, an impossible combination of passions and necessities. With this, we have all struggled. Considering that, I would like to leave you all with the proverbial words of John Steinbeck. And now that you don't have to be perfect, you can be good. Thank you, and congratulations, the class of 2019. Thank you all for being here today to help celebrate the graduation of the class of 2019. Following commencement, there'll be a luncheon in the Farley Fieldhouse. You are all invited. I'd now like to invite George Lopez and senior members of the chamber choir, the chorus, the student a cappella groups to come forward and to lead us in the singing of the alma mater. The uh, words are on the back of your program, and I would ask you if you are able to please stand.
Will guests please remain in their seats until the recessional march has passed? The 214th commencement of Bowdoin College is now concluded. <laughs>